the patients are going to have a interstitial inflammation. Here, the glomerulus will be normal, the tubules will be normal. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from PrepLadder. Now let us move on to the next special type of acute kidney injury that is very commonly asked in the exam that is acute interstitial nephritis which means as the name suggests the patients are going to have a interstitial inflammation. Here the glomerulus will be normal, the tubules will be normal. That's all. So, only the interstitium will have inflammation in a pure acute interstitial nephritis, but you can get a tubulo interstitial nephritis also. Doesn't matter if the tubules are also having uh, inflammatory changes, but usually the glomerulus for sure will be normal. If the glomerulus are showing inflammation, that is glomerular nephritis, that is different. What are the etiologies for developing acute interstitial nephritis? Of course, the most common reason is drug. Drugs generally produce a type of AN called as allergic acute initial nephritis that is called allergic AN and these are the reasons for uh, for getting AN in almost 70 to 75 percentage of the cases. In fact, in developed world and even in developing world in the urban populations, this is the usual reason for developing acute initial nephritis. What are the common drugs? I think we have discussed that already in the basic discussion part. I told you three drugs are very, very important. One is NSAIDs. Second is antibiotics and third is PPIs. These are three things that we routinely see. NSAIDs and antibiotics, most common. Okay. As I mentioned, the most common cause is going to be antibiotics in 30 to 50 percentage of the cases. Any beta lactam drug can cause, but very commonly penicillins and cephalosporins. Rifampicin can cause that, sulfur drugs can cause that, and of course, as I mentioned, NSAIDs and PPIs are also very, very important. Some uncommon drugs include 5-ASA derivatives, diuretics particularly. Loop diuretics are not going to cause but thiazides are notorious to cause acute initial nephritis. But loop diuretics are generally very rare to produce again. Apart from that, allopurinol can cause, phenytoin and many other anti-epileptic drugs can cause and uh, aristocolic acid in certain weight loss supplements can cause, some herbal and dietary supplements can cause and dabicatran surprisingly have been uh, known to cause certain cases of acute initial nephritis. For all practical reasons, three drugs are very important, NSAIDs, antibiotics and uh, your PPIs. Clear? This is very important for practice. In general, five to six days of exposure to a particular drug is generally required, but previous exposure to the drug can dramatically accelerate the symptom, which means if you are getting acute interstitial nephritis after a couple of doses or for that matters within a couple of days of exposure to a particular drug then you can think about prior exposure and sensitization to that particular drug and uh, as you mentioned already drugs are the most common cause of AN in the developed world and in urban population and infections can be considered in the developing world and in rural population of course infections according to textbooks are the third most common cause of AN especially in the developed world uh, where 5 to 10 percentage of the case of AN will be due to infections. It can be assessed with kidney infection or without kidney infections for that matters acute polynephritis which is a classic kidney infection can result in development of AN and uh, legionella and leptospirosis does not cause kidney infection but can still cause acute interstitial nephritis. For all practical purposes legionella, leptospirosis and acute polynephritis are very very important. When you want to specifically mention about Indian practice, leptospirosis is so common and one of the important mechanisms of renal injury in leptospirosis is acute interstitial nephritis. Apart from these three infections, streptococcal infections, diphtheria infections, toxoplasmosis, Epstein-Barr virus, mycoplasma, cytomegalovirus infections, polyomavirus, measles, tuberculosis, all these things can result in the development of AN. And some systemic illness, specifically connective tissue disorders can result in the development of AN and uh, I would call second most common cause 10 to 25 percentage of the case of AN are due to systemic illness and CTDs. First of course, the conditional disorders where SLE itself can cause 
acute interstitial nephritis without any glomerular involvement in lupus nephritis at all. Jogren syndrome can do the same. Sarcoidosis can uh, produce acute interstitial nephritis, which will be more of granulomatous type. Crohn's disease and ANCA are rarer causes of AM. But most important are SLE, Jogren, and sarcoidosis, where you may not have any glomerular involvement at all, only pure interstitial plus or minus tubular inflammation. Then we have a disease called TINU syndrome, which stands for tubular interstitial nephritis with antiviatis. Usually in exam, question will mention history of anterior uveitis, maybe a single attack or recurrent attack. On top of that, patient will be developing acute kidney injury, which will be typical of AN type. We'll discuss uh, the investigations later on. That time we'll understand what is AN type. So AN type, aka, and there'll be history of antiviritis. In this situation, you can think about a tenu syndrome, but in reality, your antiviritis can happen before or after kidney disease, which means your aka could be the first presentation of the patient. Patient may or may not have history of antiviritis, unlike exams where there will be usually a history of antiviritis. And then we have IgG4 related disease, which is a separate syndrome. As usual, we know in the kidneys, it doesn't cause any glomerular or vascular injury. They are going to cause interstitial injury, maybe with a little injury to the tubules. So usually in biopsy, we will see this IgG4 secreting plasma cells that are going to infiltrate the kidney. Coming to the clinical features, if the patient is having antibiotic related AN or drug related AN, typically antibiotics, where you will get a characteristic hypersensitivity reaction, patients will be having fever, skin rash, arthralgia or a serum sickness like syndrome. For that matter, the serum sickness like syndrome is very very typical of rifampicin related AN. And this classic triad that is mentioned in the textbooks, fever, rash, leukocyturia, in particular, eosinophilia, is seen in less than 10% of the cases, unfortunately, as with many other classic triads in medicine. The patient is having oscillated fever, flank pain, and costovertebral angle tenderness, then you can think about underlying pile nephritis as the cause of AN, and hypertension and edema are extremely uncommon in patients with AN and usually the patients will be non-oligic which means what are the things that are uncommon hypertension, edema and oliguria are uncommon you don't get it. Most of the patients will be having mild constitutional symptoms maybe some allergic symptoms with elevated serum creatinine so this is going to be the classic clinical presentation.